In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joyous Feast of the Descent of the Holy Spirit, also known as Pentecost. Deacon Lazarus of the St. Gregory the Enlightener Institute, and this is an Orthodox Minute. I was recently asked by a friend and catechumen who I'm, I've been working with, what is the Holy Spirit? We just celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, and uh, this question was uh, foremost in his mind. At the time, I gave him uh, the best explanation I could give him, and what follows now is what I would uh, offer as a more, a more full explanation. To understand the Holy Spirit better, all we have to do as Orthodox Christians is look to our Lex Orande, or our Law of Prayer. The Latin maxim states, Lex Orande, Lex Credende, which means the Law of Prayer is the Law of Faith. In other words, we as Orthodox Christians pray as we believe. Our liturgical texts are not just flowery poetry, but instead, it's actually precise theological definitions, statements, and affirmations which express our faith uh, with great precision and accuracy. So, if we look, for example, at the prayer known as the O Heavenly King, we begin to gain some insights into the Holy Spirit. We begin this prayer with, O Heavenly King, so from the very beginning, the first statement that we make shows that we're not just speaking to royalty in general, but we're actually speaking to a royal person. The Holy Spirit is not just some impersonal force, but he's actually a divine person. He's the third person of the All-Holy Trinity. God the Father is the source of the Holy Trinity. He is the Monae Arche or the first principle or cause of the Holy Trinity. He's the fountainhead from which the Son and the Spirit spring forth. The Son is eternally begotten of the Father before all ages, and the Spirit eternally proceeds from the Father before all ages. In other words, before the creation of time and space, God exists. And because the Son and the Spirit are one in nature, or homoousios, with the Father, as the First Ecumenical uh, Fathers stated, the Spirit and the Son coexist from all eternity as well. And they participate in the creation of all things. All of this is clearly affirmed in the pages of the New Testament. If one has the eyes to see and the ears to hear, it is likewise affirmed in our creed, the Nicene Constantinopolitan symbol of faith, in which we state we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. So returning to the prayer, O Heavenly King, we next refer to the Spirit as the Comforter. The word Comforter is a translation in Scripture of the Greek word parakletos, or paraclete. The word paraclete has a very broad meaning in its original Greek. It can mean advocate, as in a defense lawyer. The Holy Spirit defends us against all the accusations of the devil. It can mean counselor, because the Holy Spirit is the one who guides us and makes us wise in our decisions. It can also mean comforter, because the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us peace and comfort in our most difficult situations. Next in the prayer, O Heavenly King, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. This is a very important aspect of the Spirit's role in our life and in the life of the Church itself. 
our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, told his apostles, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another paraclete, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Jesus also added, But the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Finally, and this is all in the Gospel of St. John, chapters 14 and 15. Our Lord said, When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit, if we submit to him and evoke him for guidance, guides the church through the dangerous waves of heresy, lies, and false teaching. The church as a whole is guided by the Holy Spirit into God's truth, as was guaranteed by our Lord. We also personally and individually are guided by the Spirit as well. If we submit to him and repent of our sins in order to be an empty vessel to allow him to fill us with his divine grace, purity, and wisdom. Next, we say about the Holy Spirit in the same prayer, O Heavenly King, who is everywhere and filling all things. Being the Holy Spirit is one of the Holy Trinity. He is omnipotent or all-powerful. He is omnipresent or everywhere present. He is also omniscient or knowing all things. The Holy Spirit fills us with divine grace and the very presence of God himself. Next we say, treasury of blessings and giver of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. He was incarnated and took human flesh in the New Testament. He lived and walked amongst us for 30 years or 30 plus years. Then he was arrested, beaten, and crucified, and died. He rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven. He did all of this for one purpose, to give us the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the treasury of blessings, he gives us all of God's blessings. All of the fruits of Christ's redemption are bestowed on us only through the Holy Spirit. Salvation and new life itself is given us through the Holy Spirit at holy baptism and chrismation. Because he is the giver of life, the clergy and Orthodox faithful all dress in green on the feast of Holy Pentecost to show how life bursts forth from his divine activity in our lives. It is also the Holy Spirit who descends down upon the holy gifts of bread and wine in the divine liturgy at the point of the epiclesis and changes them into the very body and blood of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we might be fed by his holy body and his precious blood. This is the blessing of blessings which is accomplished only through the miraculous intervention of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, in the Epiclesis, we pray that the Holy Spirit will not only change the bread and wine, but also change us. The Holy Spirit helps us accomplish divinization in this life and union with God. This is why the prayer continues, Come, and abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. Other Christian traditions have been accused of neglecting or forgetting the third person of the Holy Trinity. In Orthodox Christianity, the Holy Spirit remains central to the spiritual life of Christians. 
This is why we conclude the Paschal season with the Feast of Holy Pentecost. The descent of the Holy Spirit is the goal, culmination, and consummation of our Lord's passion, death, and holy resurrection. Let us never forget the Holy Spirit's centrality in our spiritual life, and let us look to Him each day with renewed love and devotion as we begin our day with the prayer and say, O Heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O Good One. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, joyous feast of the descent of the Holy Spirit, joyous feast.